it's almost like a pop country kind of crossover song. And, and I know wow. that's, wow. I, I know, I know, I know people are going to hear that and be like, what the f- All yeah. right. Hey, what's up, man? Look at him. What a handsome fella. Ah, I just got a haircut the other day. It, it'll only last a couple days. I knew it was something. I could <laughs> tell. <laughs> what's up, DL? How are you, man? What's going on, Bubba? How are you? Oh, I'm not too shabby, man. We're, uh, we're, we're dealing with some weather here, and it's actually cooling off, so I can wear my, you know, my hoodies and stuff. I can, I can man. You know, feel comfortable. Where are you? Uh, we're in Wichita, Kansas, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, then I'm, we're feeling the same effects. Yeah, you know, it's late October, and... Man, I got the jacket on in the studio. It's it's getting chilly, so I feel you. Yeah, yeah. Well, you got to turn the temperature down in the studios too, to like fifty degrees or whatever, to protect the equipment. So I mean, well, yeah, yeah, that too, and the the equipment heats the room up quick. So that's that's true. That's true. Uh, yep. Well, Daniel Askowitz, uh, aka DL, new lead singer for Bad Wolves. Uh, man, uh, hell of a time for you to step into a new band and uh, put out some new music, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's been an interesting one, but it's been fun. So, uh, for those that are, are just getting to know you, um, you were a founding member of the band, the Acacia strain, uh, which was one of my favorite, uh, heavy, heavy bands, uh, oh, cool. years Love ago. It. So I, I have known your name for, for a number of years now. Uh, but you've also worked with a, with a, a lot of other bands in the hard rock and metal scene. Uh, all that remains, you worked on some projects with them. Uh, you were in a band called legend too. Um, yep. that was really good. And then, uh, even before you joined bad wolves, you worked with them on the last record, right? Legend. Uh, uh yeah, yeah. I've, I've actually kind of back and forth done stuff with legend. Um, or are you talking about all the remains? Uh, either or, I mean, I, you know, I, yeah, I'm very, I'm I did the last all the remains album. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And then you did, yep. uh, you, you were part of that band legend too. Like is, is that still an active project? Yeah. Yeah. Actually, uh, it's funny that you mentioned it. The same night that uh, Dear Monsters comes out, Legend has like a new single kind of coming out that um, I think that's that's kind of the the way that they're going to treat that band now is just kind of put out singles and, and just have it be kind of a, a fun thing. And um, the singer, Chad, he's kind of been collaborating with different producers, different writers and stuff. So it's it's a uh, you know, it's not like a full band live thing or anything, but it's 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 a it's a fun platform for for Chad and, you know, me to release heavy music and whatever. So, yeah. Well, and there was a, there was a, it all kind of fell into the same realm as like what you did with the Acacia Strain and some other projects too. But there was a lot more of that metalcore kind of sound with it too, where like people got the kill switch engaged vibe with this. And that's where you start seeing the meshing of, you know, the real heavy vocals versus the clean vocals too. Now where you, you did vocal work on legend too, right? Yes. Uh, so like that was kind of, uh, Chad and I kind of just played the, the good cop, bad cop kind of deal. And, <laughs> and gotcha. he did the, he did all the screaming and I did all the, the clean singing. <laughs> I got you. Okay. Uh, but now, I mean, that, that all seemed to kind of pave the way for you to work with Bad Wolves now. Now you worked with them uh, previously. You were actually collaborating with them on the Nation record, the last record, right? Yes. Yeah. I did a little bit of co-writing on the, the second album. And um, yeah, I think that was just kind of a stepping stone to kind of reigniting uh, our, our friendships and just talking a little bit between the guys and I. And um, yeah, it was just one of those things, you know. Now, did you know them previously, like through other projects or just within the scene? Uh, yeah, you know, we all, we all kind of came from the, the same metal background, metal community. So it's like, even if, you know, you haven't, uh, the, one of the guys that I, I haven't met before I came in the band was, you know, Kyle Conkeel. And, and um, although like you haven't formally met, um, right. even com- coming to rehearsal the first day, you feel like you know each other because it's just like, that same community that you come from and it's like ships passing in the night. So, um, so yeah, I think, you know, but kind of going back the furthest, um, my, my longest relationship that I've had with any of the guys in the band was with doc. Okay. Um, yeah, because we, we had toured when he was in God forbid and I was in the occasion strain, we had toured together. We did a couple full U S tours together. And even before that, um, we were playing kind of like local one-off shows together you know they were a new jersey band we were a massachusetts band so we ended up being on a lot of like local bills together and um yeah i think I, i've known doc since 2004 or so very cool you know, moving forward yeah we kind of just kept in touch and uh you know the rest is history so this opportunity opened up for bad wolves did did you see it first or did somebody reach out to you did doc reach out to you and say hey we've got this opening do you want to audition 
Um, I believe John reached out to me oh, first. Okay. Yeah. Um, Doc had a demo that I had sent him years ago uh, out of my own, own fandom. I was, you know, I'm always in creative mode. I'm always writing or I'm always kind of, even if I'm not writing, I'm, I'm, you know, covering something or just something to kind of keep my, uh, keep my tools sharp. So right. uh, I always kind of, I always sing on my own stuff. I, I always demo my own stuff. And um, I think I, I sent Doc a seven dust cover that I had done years ago after we had done a podcast together uh, with his X-Men podcast. Yeah. And uh, he still had that demo. And I think, you know, when the time came to, to start looking for a new singer um, in Bad Wolves, you know, Doc still maybe had that demo and uh, they had that talk and listened to it. And, and John reached out and just kind of got the ball rolling there. And, you know, that's brings us to here. Here we are. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've got the new music now. The new record comes out on Friday. We're going to talk more about it in a second. But let's talk about Lifeline because it is uh just an incredible rock song um front to back it's amazing i'm i'm intrigued though is is this your first song that is entirely clean vocals yes yeah okay it is um it just you know I, there was there was quite a few contenders for um or ideas for what the single would be um and really you know the record is just kind of set up in a way to where any of the 12 tracks on the album could have really ended up being a single. I think that's just kind of how we tend to, that's, that's what we like to listen to. That's how we tend to write. So, um, you know, but at the end of the day, lifeline just felt like it was, um, really that kind of happy medium of, of heavy, but still, you know, melodic and hooky and, um, kind of, we felt like it was all of the strong points, um, that are representative of, of what bad wolves really is and, and what this, you know, kind of indicative of what the rest of the album really is. So um, we felt like it just really kind of hit that, that middle mark of classic bad wolves and kind of showcasing the, the new uh, kind of step forward with it. Yeah. Bad wolves known for really kind of mixing up a lot of the, uh, uh, you know, softer side of stuff and then some more mainstream stuff, but then obviously uh, having that real heavy corner, uh, of music as well that gets pretty aggressive like for the fans that are are fans of the heavier stuff there's definitely some of that on the record too right yeah yeah I, i've just kind of been i feel like we kind of um just broadened those boundaries right so like with this new album um the only real intention we had of course was to maintain the integrity of what bad wolves really is you know a really heavy band with, with big melodic parts and and, you know, I think we've achieved that. But beyond that, you know, we really um, wanted to kind of stretch the boundaries of of the uh, the crossover aspect of the band. So, like, right. you know, with, with Dear Monsters, um, I feel like the, uh, we feel like the heavy tracks are probably the heaviest tracks that Bad Wolves has ever done. And okay. we also, on the other side of it, we feel like the soft stuff is some of the softest, most beautiful stuff that they've ever done. So... What was it like working with these guys? Because I know you did, you know, collaborative stuff and some writing during uh, Nation, but now, you know, you're with the whole band. Now the whole band is together now for, you know, the entirety process here. Was it different working with them on a full-time uh, kind of way of doing things as opposed to when you were just collaborating with them? Yeah, absolutely. Um, especially, you know, once we got into it. Oops. Sorry, I'm, I'm getting, like, notifications on the phone. Um <laughs> Yeah, no, no, it really was it, it much different, uh, especially once we kind of all got into the same room together and had a chance to really kind of test the chemistry, uh, writing chemistry and stuff. Um, it, you know, even beyond that, uh, before any of, of the writing, honestly, um, the real kind of test of the chemistry was when I, uh, during the tryout process, when like, you know, I, I had already sent them the demos and we got to the stage of like, all right, come out here and, and let's do like a live set together and let's just kind of, um, you know, as, as much as the band was trying me out, I was also trying the band out as well. So sure. I think, I think that's really where like the chemistry kind of test was it, it just uh, getting into a rehearsal room and, and running through a six, seven song set. And, um, you know, uh, more less uh, more than that just going out to dinner and then kind of having some drinks together <laughs> and then just really kind of feeling each other out. And that, that was really like, that was the moment um i think for them but i know for me that that i was just like i love these guys and uh let's let's freaking do this you know 
I feel like going out and getting drinks with with the guys in the band. Or really, any kind of situation is the best way to get to know anybody because you know the inhibition yeah, drop, man. and then you're like, ah, I see who you really are now. Drunk words or sober thoughts, right? Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yep. Well, the record's coming out on Friday, Dear Monsters, and uh, from we've we've only heard Lifeline. Now, in in some other oh circumstances, God. we would have heard you know a number of other tracks and stuff. So we only have Lifeline to go on, and you said it's probably the best broad spectrum uh song of the record but if there was any point in the record where you could point out and say pay attention here like this is this is the moment that you should look out for like do you have one of those in the record yeah um i think i would have to say that it's you know for me personally it's it's springfield summer and i (laughs) I think uh you know i've heard john also kind of have the same sentiment but um it's just one of those songs that that we really kind of finally all got to do something um you know respectively that we've always wanted to do um and we we kind of just you know haven't had the chance i I think it's kind of uh vocally stylistically um not a song that uh bad wolves would have done in the past and i it's definitely certainly something that i wouldn't have done in the past with, with my former band so um you know it's it's almost like a uh man it's it's almost like a pop country kind of crossover song and i know that's wow. Wow. I, I know i know i know people are gonna hear that and be like what the frick like <laughs> like freak out but but um i mean uh, i know i know like music and genre crossover is kind of like the thing now where it's like i'm gonna mix you know edm with country music or something like that or whatever post malone's doing these days but hey, like <laughs> that's that's i mean those new sounds is like it's what it's what keeps music interesting and um you know especially as an artist and stuff too it's it, that's what what keeps uh your your like personal job interesting too so um yeah it's it's definitely a song i think that we're all kind of proud of and um it just kind of like i said it just really uh it feels like it's a song that that um unintentionally may really broaden our our audience and um yeah you know like uh, really going into it there's there's no intention with this record we just uh first and foremost we really just wanted to write an album that we love that we're fans of so and i think you know that that's what we ended up with at the end of the day now you have not performed with them in front of an audience yet right no yeah nope uh so touring for that probably Can't wait. yeah probably not coming until next year but you know we let's get the record out of the way first you know <laughs> yeah yeah that's i mean that's that's really what what our um our timeline is anyway we, we were really just kind of hyper focused on this month and um all the little things leading up to the release and, and now here we are like the week of release so now we're really starting to look beyond the release and um you know we are talking we have a few tours i think lined up uh nothing two of them not really solidified yet one of them i think uh will be announcing very shortly here actually for february um okay. so yeah fingers crossed everything works out and and you know uh hopefully covid and all that crap doesn't uh throw a wrench in things but you know we'll see what happens day by right. day but but it looks like we'll be hitting the road in february now the one thing i did notice from a lot of your previous projects is that you've always had a guitar in your hands uh, when you're singing or playing or whatever is this your first group where you're out front with no guitar yes how, yes how weird i'm so is excited that? i love that i mean I, I still haven't really figured out what the hell to do with my hands but <laughs> going ricky but like bobby once, with it like i don't know what to do yeah, with my hands <laughs> somebody said that i'm not sure what to do with my hands somebody said that to me that like where he like his hands slowly come up during an interview or something. It's like, so I think, you know, there's a learning curve and uh, there's some things that like, I'm going to have to get used to, but really I, I am looking forward to not having to worry about the instrumental side of things. Cause the band is so damn good that it's, it's really cool to like uh, know that I'm going to have a chance to just, uh, you know, maybe go have a drink uh, mid set or, or put the, <laughs> put the microphone in my back pocket and give a bunch of high fives and shit. You know, it's like, right have a little bit of freedom so um, i'll look forward to that doc's uh doc's guitar solo you're gonna go back and just have a drink in front of the in front of the drum set you know and just just watch it yeah, or, that or, moment you know or you know mid solo i can just check on them and just oh yeah, yeah you know these guys know what the hell they're doing so <laughs> 
Well, uh, we're looking forward to the record. Obviously, Dear Monsters coming out on Friday. Again, Lifeline crushing it right now. We've been spending the crap out of it at T95. You know, we appreciate you. Thank you so love, much. Love Bad Wolves. Can't wait to have you guys back. Fingers crossed you're involved in Wichita on that tour in February or, or whenever, you know, all that comes to fruition. But we're, we love Bad Wolves in Wichita. Can't wait to see you guys. And, uh, you know, hopefully when you do come through, we get to meet in person instead of, you know, through Zoom and all that kind of stuff. Oh, I already owe you a drink. Can't I, wait. All right, all right. I'm going to hold you to that, man. I I love me a good free drink. Sounds good, brother. Thank you for having me. (laughs) Absolutely, DL, man. Be safe, and uh, we'll talk soon, brother, all right? Absolutely. See ya.